The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is in the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, and then full, the full grain of, in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, to what shall we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable can we use for it? It's like a mustard seed that when it is sown in the ground, it is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them. But to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. It's an amazing thing. It helps us sometimes to remember things from stories. Stories have a very powerful, powerful ability to kind of burn into our memory. And that's why Jesus used parables. And not only that, it gives us a chance to figure out and trying to meditate and reflect on what is Jesus trying to say? What is he trying to teach us in all this? And what he's trying to say is never underestimate the impact you can have on the world. Maybe a kind word, maybe helping someone see that they're valued and loved by God. Remember that first day of class, I try and tell you guys, each and every one of you is an infinitely valuable, one of a kind, masterpiece created by God for a mission. And sadly in our world, not everybody sees others like that. Other people see people as enemies and they think they're against them and they won't protect them. And so we need to be that people that recognizes the gift of every human being from the first moment of their existence until they naturally are called home by God. But our world wants to treat people more like dogs, like if dogs are suffering, we just, you know, take them and, and kind of alleviate their suffering. Or, or if we don't want, you know, a puppy, we just give them away or do different things like that. And they're, they're dogs, there's nothing wrong with that. That's not a sin, that's not immoral because they don't have a human soul. But each and every one of us are really special. And we as Christians need to help the world understand that everybody is really, really, really special. And Jesus is trying to help us through this parable to realize that even though it seems like you don't make much of an impact, you can make a big impact in the world. And you'll only know that in heaven. You'll only recognize that in heaven. You know, in the first reading, the writer is trying to talk to the Jewish people and the Jewish people had to make a shift. They didn't know what to make of all this, especially after the Jewish temple was destroyed and the way they worshiped God was so different. And the author of this letter to the Hebrews is trying to explain to them that there's a new sacrifice now. And God gave us the mass and Jesus is that sacrifice. And if we understand that reality, it changes everything. In a little bit, I'm gonna say, Brothers and sisters, may the Lord accept this sacrifice at my hands and yours. And what that means is that all the little difficulties that you're having, maybe you're worried about a test or worried about getting some homework done or, or maybe somebody's treating you not very kindly, you can put that on the altar and say, Lord, I wanna pray for that person. I wanna pray for this thing. I offer up these, this sacrifice to you with Father Glenn as he's praying the mass. Because that's why we come to mass. We come to Mass to give God thanks because He gives us everything. He gave us life, He gave us breath, He gave us our family, He gave us our friends. He gave us everything that is true, good, and beautiful. And that's why we're so happy to give Him thanks. But the world forgets that. There's so many people in the world that don't even believe in God and it's really sad. 
they don't think very deeply. You know, they don't really understand things very much, but yet in their own mind, they oftentimes think they're really smart. Okay, it's really kind of sad, but they're not thinking about where did we come from? Who caused the Big Bang? And everything scientifically says that the Big Bang can't just happen out of nothing. Something had to cause that. And we know through faith that that was God. My prayer for all of us is that we know how much we're loved by God and how important it is for us to show that others are loved by God by our love for them. Christianity is really simple. Treat other people like you would like to be treated. If you don't want people to steal your stuff, don't steal stuff. If you don't want people to lie to you, then don't lie to them. It's really simple. And if we do that, if we just live our life that way, our world will be a lot better, okay? So let us pray that we can be like that mustard seed. Even though it doesn't seem like much, it can make a huge difference. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us stand. We pray for the church, that she may be a light to the nations and a guide to all peoples. We pray to the Lord. For all nations throughout the world, that they may know and serve the common good and not be motivated by greed and self-interest, we pray to the Lord. For Brian Buddha, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. For the end of the pandemic, that God will supernaturally intervene and bring it to an end, we pray to the Lord. For all the nurses and doctors and all the people that try and help people be safe and, and, and secure, uh, all the police officers, military personnel that try and keep our society stable, that God give them the strength not to lose heart in these very difficult times, we pray to the Lord. That all corruption in our world be uncovered, that those responsible for it lose their power or be converted so that we can have leaders that respect life, religious liberty, and all that's in accord with natural law. We pray to the Lord. Let us just pray for the conversion of hearts that people will long to protect the innocent and vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. 